Uh, I'm Michael Howe, VP of Product Marketing at Glueware, and presenting alongside with me, uh, co-presenting, is Olivier Hoon Van, our Chief Science Officer and co-founder. So just want to note that it was a little over a year ago today that we presented at Network Field Day 22 in Santa Clara with a lot of these same delegates, so it's uh, great to see you, many of you again. And although that was the last live marketing event we've done and we haven't been traveling, we have been innovating. And uh, we've had uh, two major releases and we've had a couple minor releases and we've been deploying some of the largest scale automation in our company's history. So again, great to be with you today. Taking a very quick high level view at the agenda for today, I'm gonna set us up with just what is Glueware and what do we do? And I'm gonna run you through a brief demo just to kind of set the stage on what our end users do with our application. We're gonna look at three key use cases, all net new to Glueware starting with automating the public cloud. So extremely hot topic, everyone's moving the cloud as we know. So we're gonna show automating AWS, and we're also gonna show leveraging native API calls to configure things like CSR that exists within the cloud. We're gonna show you automating Cisco's SD-WAN, both, both through CLI uh, to the devices as well as API calls to the vManage controller. And we'll show you uh, automating Cisco Meraki. So with that, Let's just jump right into the session and get going. So what, what is Glueware? Glueware is a, a network automation software solution that brings abstraction and a layer of intelligence to manage complex enterprise networks. So we automate multi-vendor networks. We're at over 30 operating systems and growing. We automate multi-vendor, so, or sorry, multi-domain uh, with LAN, campus, WAN, and data center. And now we're moving into the public clouds domain. And if you know our history, we're going back to the SD-WAN domain. Our very first solution was automating Cisco iWAN. So for those of you who have uh, kept track of our, of our company, the Glueware platform is intent-based and declarative. We have an adapter layer and we can speak native CLI and semantics or speak API down to the network layer. And we ingest and wrap everything in data modeling. So we essentially enable programmatic interaction to discover inventory, drift, monitor, audit, upgrade uh, operating systems, and perform intelligent configuration management. So we're used across the full life cycle of managing network products and services from deployments through daily changes and upgrades and troubleshooting and migrating services. And we're often replacing legacy NCCM products. We're let, letting companies and enabling them to move away from scripting and that and the high percent of manual effort that is still there today and uh, Oftentimes, uh, one of the main mechanisms people are still banging on CLI to uh, manage networks. So kind of the market texture, if you will, the, the high level view of what Glueware is from a platform standpoint, we help to overcome the biggest barriers to automation, which is the learning curve of a programming language and the effort to develop and test and deploy and maintain scripts and playbooks and modules. So. What we bring is a suite of applications that you seek to inventory and drift and audit and provide configuration management that reside on the on top of the intelligent orchestration engine. So the orchestration engine is kind of where the magic happens. It's microservice based. It has integrated databases. It has a the declarative provisioning engine that can read, analyze, compare, and render the necessary changes to put the, the network into the desired state. And Glueware automates both physical and virtual. So we've, uh, what do I, one of the things I wanna point out in this session is one of the boxes you see in this lo lower pane here of the customer network. One of our focuses in the last year has been automating API-based systems. So both in the cloud as well as uh, Cisco vManage and, and Rocky, you're gonna see a lot of interaction and automating through that, uh, through the API layer. So in terms of when you think, well, when you say multi-vendor, what do you automate today? Well, we automate, as I mentioned, over 30 operating systems, and we also have the ability to onboard op operating systems very quickly. So when we get new requests from customers for, you know, uh, let's say we, we implemented, um, you know, Cisco uh, ACI for a customer, and it was just a couple of days of development, and we turned around a solution to them in less than two weeks. So we've automated the vendors you see here. I do want to draw attention to our focus today, which is uh, in the Cisco column around the API-based controllers. We'll, we'll be highlighting automating vManage as well as Meraki. And then the far right column, introduced in December, we onboarded the Terraform engine and certain providers as part of our solution. And so while we've onboarded the ability to automate multi-cloud, we'll be highlighting uh, and demonstrating automating AWS. Um, one last slide, and we're going to jump into a quick demonstration. 
in that when you think, well, okay, I get the high level, what do what do your customers come to you for? What are you what are you doing for the customers? And you see a list of reference customers down here. And one thing you'll note is that customers of Glueware in highly regulated industries like financials and pharmas and insurance companies and banks really tend to benefit a lot from Glueware. They are concerned about security. They need to minimize downtime and outages. So this is remote, trying to remove that human element and manual misconfigurations. Compliance is key. When you look at specs like PCI DSS or Sarbanes-Oxley or even NIST specifications, many of them are accelerating the move to cloud. So we're talking about automating the network to enable the network to connect to the cloud, but now we're also talking about the network that sits in the cloud, and we're going to see that today. And it's just really about lifecycle management, making the NetOps team more agile to respond to the requests coming in. Maybe it's uh, especially when the pandemic hit, you had to you know, change QoS policies and change your VPN settings and change a lot of things to really adapt the network to the work from home situation we have. So with that brief intro, what I'd like to do is switch and to make it a little more exciting and do a little less tell and do a little bit of show here. So let me get, get signed in. Hopefully you can see my Glueware screen here. I'm gonna quickly sign into my, Glueware is a, as I mentioned, it's a pure software solution. I'm gonna sign into an instance here. And one of the first things you'll see with Glueware 4.0 and newer is that we've introduced a really powerful dashboard framework. So I get a little welcome screen here and I can understand who's on the system, which is me, my total device count. This is a widget based dashboard you're probably familiar with, like the concept of build your own dashboards with widgets as well as preset uh, dashboards. But it, uh, it's more than that. As I navigate over to my inventory, you can bring information about your system right up to you as a network user and it, and it helps you to then navigate into those things. So as I look at this and I can see my device activity, what was the last acti activity perform a discovery if there's any errors. And uh, if I navigate into the next dashboard here, it's around OS management. So let's say I'm working on a project to unify operating systems and I'm running a file. Maybe I'm coming in on Monday and I want to know what um, if there's any failures of any um, operating system upgrades. And the last one here I'll take a look at is audit and drift. So I'm regularly auditing my network and I'm actually monitoring my network for change and I can click into any one of these. So Let's take the next step down here and let me take a look at my inventory. And let's say I want to take some action on the routers in my network here. So I can actually navigate right in from the dashboard. And what that, by clicking from the dashboard, it's applying a filter for me to see exactly the, that type of device. So again, you navigate in from it. Now you can begin to perform additional actions. Well, one of the actions I want to highlight too that we've added here is that Blueware has a network discovery capability where you, you give it a seated device and you can use a device from your, that's uh, already imported in your system. You tell Blueware how exhaustive you want it to search the network by hop count. And then you say the mechanism. So Blueware actually leverages the ARP table to look at IP entries that are actually in the network instead of kind of an un, unintelligent scan of just IP subnets. We also can leverage CDP or LLDP. So you're, you're essentially connecting into a seed device. And as you let the discovery run, it will crawl that MAC table and then discover, in this case, it's a small lab network. I'm discovering these Cisco devices and I can see some, some errors. And it's really interesting because what we find with customers, when we, when we run discovery, we very quickly find issues like devices that were supposed to be disconnected and, and weren't. We see um, login or you know um, credential issues. We see network issues, and you can log into those errors and see exactly what the problem is. And and in this case, uh, you know, with authorization fail, that means that that uh, you don't have the proper credentials. I can come. Let's say I'm troubleshooting an NTP problem. I mean, there's the state, so I'm going to search across all my routers to to see what is configured for NTP, and I execute the query. It runs extremely quickly because all the configs are already in our database. So now I can see exactly how these devices are configured. And again, I don't have to kind of manually go box by box and sign in and issue commands. And here I'm looking at an operational state and it's a regex based query. So I can run the query here. And it, it takes a little time, but in parallel, we're going out and accessing all those devices, executing the commands, and it's going to give me my matches. So I can, I can come in here and see that clock is synchronized on this guy 
And if I was troubleshooting a problem, the clock is unsynchronized. So again, if I was troubleshooting, I just was able to execute that across lots of devices and then uh, fine tune and, and highlight the issue I was looking for. So that's uh, a device, uh, our uh, device manager here in, in, in Glueware. One of the other things very quickly highlighting we're here at Cisco Live is I'm gonna clear my filter reset and I have a switch in my lab. With Cisco, we have the ability to reach out to their support API and pull things like end of sale, smart net contract status, PCERT status. So I can see that this device is going end of sale this year. So if I was capacity planning or looking at planning on, you know, I'm trying to understand my inventory, this could be very useful. Navigating over here, I can also look at all of the, the PCERTs issued on this device. And I could, you know, look in to see is, is this something that I'm exposed to? Do I need to work around with a configuration change or do I need to upgrade the device to, to work around that? And then the last one you'll see here is the smart net contract status. And it's actually, this one has been, this one's been interesting because now we actually can generate a report for you very on the details of your hardware inventory with Cisco devices, as well as your, your current licensing deployment status. So a lot of companies are, are, you know, getting audited and you have to ensure that you're, you're covered in, in terms of what you're licensed and what you're paying for. So a couple quick things to show you additionally. I'm moving into Drift and Audit. In Drift and Audit, it's a dual purpose app. One of the things you're looking at is what has changed in my network. So I have my captured status. So Glueware is going out and can query the network periodically or you can trigger it, or uh, it can be triggered by an event like syslog. So I can see I captured a syslog event here. So I can double click on that and see exactly what has changed. So again, I'm coming in on Monday morning Maybe I'm starting to get you know, issues related to people can't get to certain websites or maybe a, t a timing issue. I can see someone came in and made a manual change, adding a name server and adding NTP. Maybe they're trying to work around an issue and may cause an issue because they just took this configuration out of the, the, the standard specification. So this is a really nice insight for folks in, in operations where when the finger pointing happens, they can look at the network and know exactly what changed. The other side of this application is audit. So what we've done is made it extremely easy to build audit policies. Like this is a, a pretty robust audit um, that the DOD produced as part of the uh, NIST specification. And so when you build audits in Glueware to audit configurations, you're, you're building rules that are either required commands, like requiring an inbound access list on, on your interfaces, or forbidden, maybe you know, turning off these uh, services could expose security-related concerns. So with just simple CLI and regex, you can build very powerful audits and then audit your network. And if we look at the results of this audit, what you're able to see is that Glueware gives you very detailed breakdowns per device, and then you can, ex you can look at the device and see exactly which violation occurred. So, so far, I've shown you automating the read-only. We're inventorying the network, we're discovering it, we're looking at you know, information like serial numbers and smart net contracts and other things. Now we're auditing it to see you know, how far off an internal specification or, or an external compliance specification we are. Now you have the information to go and take action. And so when you go and take action with Glueware, you're going into our model editor where we enable our config modeling technology. And with config modeling, what we do, and I'm going to show you a graphical representation. One of the presentations here today, we're going to be talking about Terraform and infrastructure as code. And the Glueware approach is to, when you, when you automate an existing network, you need to kind of be able to ingest and you need to be able to take what is configured and define it as code. So we take that in two parts. We define the features configured and we define the, the policy attached to it. So NTP is a feature. NTP server, some config statement is the policy. And if you look at what Glueware is able to do, and this is, a, again, a graphical representation, we can automate, you know, as few as, you know, banner, or we can automate the entire configuration. And what, what we're doing here without getting too deep into it is that, let me pick on that NTP example. We are, we enable the customer to bring their own config, bring their own policy. So in this case, you know, I'm pointing to an NTP server. So you can bring your own config 
But what you see here, if I click on the JSON button, everything inside of Glueware is wrapped in data modeling. Data modeling makes it programmatic. So when we think, you know, how do we make CLI-based networks or legacy-based networks programmatic? Glueware, you wrap that intelligent software on top. Now everything we do from the way we manage these configuration pieces to the way we provision them to the network is wrapped in data modeling. And if I zoom in here, you can see it's version controlled. So this, in this example, this source of truth, if you will, or this desired state sits within Glueware. We also can sync with systems that where maybe you're storing it outside of Glueware. And that's true for configs as well as variables, because there's always the conversation of the source of truth and where IP address is stored and VLANs and VNFs and other things. So what, just to, just to close on this here is that with Glueware, you are defining an intended state, the desired state for each one of these configurations through CLI, as well as we can abstract CLI into a more simple form fill based user interface. Let's say to simplify things for an ops engineer to just come in and put a variable in the field. But we're, we're telling it the desired state. And then when you provision these features to one or hundreds or thousands of devices, it's executed using the intelligent engine, which will read current state, determine what we need to render, and then apply only the configuration necessary to get into the desired state, including removing what is out of policy or what shouldn't be there. And so with that, Glueware is declarative and wide and potent, meaning we're, every time you run Glueware, you're going to get the same outcome from your automation. And that's not true, really, when you look at a lot of scripts, and it really depends on how scripts were written. And we've all done manual. Manual, uh, it's really about you know, all of, you know, have you're going to execute all the pre-checks manually, you're going to execute all the post-checks. And uh, we, we all know that doing it a few dozen times to a few hundred times is not really feasible when you're working on large networks. 